Hello everyone and welcome to this or sixth episode of the evolution of MMOs in which we'll be playing Dungeons and Dragons Online. My name is McCheese and I am sitting here with Osiris. Dungeons and Dragons Online. Yes, hello people. God, I love the sound of that name. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons Bow down Online. and sacrifice your life. No, we won't. Uh, so, last week when we were playing World of Warcraft, we said, well, we're going to play Guild Wars 1 next week. And obviously that did not happen. The problem is that Guild Wars 1 have a free trial, but that trial is insanely limited. You are not able to uh, party up with anyone, you're not able to chat with anyone, you're not able to do anything. So first we realized, okay, we can't party up and that's kind of stupid because the entire world in Guild Wars is instanced. So that means that whenever we're going out of the, the main uh, quest hubs or the main cities, we'd have to be in a party to not uh, end up in uh, two different uh, versions of the world. So of course we'll just be able to like party up with some uh, player that actually bought the game and just have him standing in the city while we were running around the world. That could probably work. But then we've uh, realized that we weren't able to chat with anyone either because that was restricted. So yeah, we uh, gave the sad, up. The sad part is that we both own a copy of Guild Wars and we forgot our login or rather our secret answer, or at least I did, uh, to the question and I didn't feel like contacting them because I don't have the CD anymore with the CD key so they probably won't be able to help me anyway yeah exactly well but so we just decided to skip it and uh, yeah even apparently wh when I when I try to recover my account uh, it asked for my birthday which I'm pretty sure I know but yet whenever mm -hmm. I, I entered my birthday it wouldn't accept it so I don't even not not a very good Could experience. Could be that your account got hacked in the meantime or something. Yeah, that's possible. I haven't been playing that game for years. No. Um. I never, I never really got into that game. Nah, me neither. Because uh, I'm such a WoW addict, so. Yeah, but it just didn't feel too good, and it just uh, that the, the whole world was instant was kind of odd if you didn't have anyone to play with and stuff like that. So. The fact that you can jump also put me off. It's, I know it's weird. <laughs> yeah. but You've got to be able to jump. But it's sad because now I'm really looking forward to Guild Wars 2 and I actually kind of was looking forward to play it a bit. But because I've seen some videos of the later stuff in Guild Wars and it actually looks kind of good. But yeah, you know, it's like the I fact think it's too that late for us. Well, we'll just, uh, Guild Wars 2 is right around the fact the that we don't play it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, that was one of the things. Uh, so yeah, we ended up with uh, our next game on the list, which was then uh, Dungeon Dragons Online. Uh, and we have been... Which... Did somebody adjust It's it? actually very much like Guild Wars, where you are going into instance areas. The whole world is instance, except for the towns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so we are running around in a world that is just reserved for me and Osiris. And in this, well, instanced open world, they also have, like, minor dungeons that you're running into. So, uh, dungeon and, well, dungeons is at least uh, the right part of the name. We haven't seen any dragons yet, but I guess they're out there. <laughs> they should be here, otherwise that would be a very lame name. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, I mean, it's a very authentic name. It's like the first pen and paper RPG style games that people came out with. Yep. It's I even had like TV series with cartoons and all that shit, so it's pretty popular. I've never really paid attention to this game at all when it came out, so this is really kind of a surprise to find out that this game is actually quite enjoyable. It is. It Let's is just go in here. enjoyable. Yes, so what you'll be seeing oh. here is... What? Mystery's nope. Peak? By a by who? Quest. Uh, I don't know. Amalgam. Yeah, uh, whatever. Well, what do we have to do then? Uh, I don't know. Find another place to go to. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Okay. We only, we only like, explored a very little part of this place. But, but yeah, this game came out uh, February 28, 2006. Uh, it's made by Turbine. From the lovely folks who made Lord of the Rings Online a year after that, actually. Which is also a game we're going to be playing at some point. 
Yeah, after this exact actually. Okay, yeah, cool. Which I actually played that game quite a bit and I love that game. I it's am even weirder that I didn't really check out this game before. I'm also very much looking forward to it. I mean, uh, I haven't I haven't actually played it, but it's just been one of the games that has been lurking out all the time and being a game that I really wanted to try out. Yeah, it's really good. Oh god, I'm aggroing some more mobs out here. Alright. But we should just try and find some place where we Oh I don't know, do we have a, do we have like a, any quests for any instances actually? Because if you have to have quests to go into instances then I'd feel a, I think we are a bit limited on that. So the way this works is you do not get XP for killing mobs. You only get XP for uh, doing stuff in your quest, killing mobs in your quest, uh, or killing bosses, named bosses. Uh, which is quite quite unique. You don't also don't get loot from mobs. You are rewarded by chests which you find in the end or halfway through uh, through the dungeons. And the loot is specifically towards everyone in the group, so everyone gets loot. Which I find very nice and refreshing and really, uh, you know, forces people to work together and, you know, because you don't go somewhere for the loot, you just go there to go together and you'll get something out of it no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Nice. There's no stealing and the loot items. Is, the loot is very random. You, can, you could get a very good item randomly inside of an easy dungeon that could be better than or equal to a uh, hard raid encounter, which is fairly interesting. But that item would be extremely rare, of course. But I mean, that's also so partly very, because uh, they have... So raids in this game is something that's not reserved for end game. There is raids when you level uh, that people will mm -hmm. run as well, so... Yeah. So why we we need to find a dungeon or something? Yeah, I'm g I, this uh, this place looks see. suitably epic, doesn't it? So I'm guessing there could be something up here. Yeah, it is. So it's snowing here, but it's wet snow, so it's immediately goes away. And the trees are green, and yeah, <laughs> it's odd. And there's great fish, big but fish. I, I, but so far, I love the atmosphere of this game. It, the graphics are, I mean, hey, they're not here amazing, but they're good. No. Yes, we can go in here. Okay. Let's do it. Mangled sewer grate leads to an old abandoned cannon. So but as yeah, you'll uh, notice, I just the atmosphere when these dungeons are really, are really awesome. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, partly, uh, part of this is because the dungeons are narrated. Like, well, you're like you're playing uh, Dungeon Dragons, and that will be like a, a game master. So you'll notice mm -hmm. when we go through here that sometimes there's the narrator that are just explaining. Uh, what's going on, or setting the atmosphere, or giving hints to what you have to do, or whatever. Lots of puzzles in this game as well. Yeah, so that is hopefully I something we'll really be able to show as well. Has been up. The work looks very so there so you yeah, could this probably game, hear uh, It's now free to play, right? But it wasn't always free to play. Uh, it actually started uh, with monthly fees, but uh, it did not do well, to the point that they actually almost had to close down the servers, as far as I understood it. But they closed the European service at some point. Yeah, they, but they, t they took a risk with their free play model, which I created. And after that, uh, the player base rapidly increased because, you know, people were curious. And um, their free to play model is actually quite good. This is the first game where I could say that this is actually a pretty damn good free to play model. But that's odd because I'm almost certain that that uh, Dungeon Dragons Online here was one of the first games to go free to play, mm -hmm. and yet they do it a lot better than EverQuest and also better than uh, City of Heroes. Yeah, so you can buy certain stuff in the store, but you can earn something in game where you earn. Whoa! What the fuck is that? I don't think I'm going to give it a shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guess I could try them. Not too bad. But yeah, you can earn like uh, I can't remember what it's called now. I want to say karma, but that's what it's called in Guild Wars 2. You can earn something, uh, which you can tra translate into the currency, the turbine points. So you could grind really hard and earn everything from the store in game. So you don't actually have to pay money for it, which I really and really like. 
Or you could play, become a VIP member and play mon pay monthly and you get everything. So I think that's that's a very genius way to do it. Yeah, I agree. Just people should be able to get anything from the store without actually having to pay for it. I mean, don't mind that paying is an adv is an advantage. That's all fine, but it's annoying if you have to pay. Uh, sure we can probably blocked. get in through the yeah. the entrance there inside. Yeah. So we had a question here that's called uh, redemption, where we have to find some guy called Lars. And oh yeah, we have barrier, oh. compressed energy, resolutely blocks your path. Hmm. You you Curious. Okay, so finding a, a way to disable this magical barrier. I mean, in most games, that would probably make. Oh, what is this? Huh. Knocked down. In in most games, that would probably make sense. Just okay, we have to get through there. But this game is just uh, actually just explaining to you what's going on. See a familiar sight. Canis power crystals. Door is locked. Like the one you saw in Corpus. Yeah. But what are these ones powering? Excellent wow, question. What are these? Powering? So this is interesting. You don't regenerate health and mana or spell points, as they call it here. Uh, oh, valve. Valve. That's uh, probably doing something. You don't regenerate any of that stuff in in combat, right? Or or in when you're walking, you have to rest at these shrines. So you'll find these everywhere, where you take like ten seconds and you regenerate everything you need, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's it's a weird little system because that means that I'm a I'm a fighter, I think it's called. Uh, a warrior style mm -hmm. kind of guy. Um, and I have some consist I'm able to put out some consistent damage because I'm not based uh, my damage is not based on any resource. Whereas Osiris have this uh, spell power resource and that means that after some time in combat he'll actually run out of it and he'll have to rest to regain it. I'm using this whale now. Alright, so uh, I just used it. Did you use both of them? There's several. Oh. What is it we actually need to do? We need to, we need to stop all the valves, right? I, I don't know. Can you like redirect it to some other place? Perhaps you need all the crystals to be like frozen down or... Oh, turn, turn all the valves. Uh, we missed one. Which one did we miss? Uh... There is one on the other side here, I think. Yeah. Oh, there. I'm using it. Without the alchemical jets right. coating the Canid power crystals, you can now easily destroy it. Hell yeah. Okay. Come on. There we go. Crystal shatters. The hum of power slowly fades into a heavy silence. All the quests are repeatable in this game, as far as I've seen. Or yep. at least most of them. No, well, I think every everything is so. When you go, you go out. You take a quest, you complete it, then you're in, then you're able to do it again and again and again if you like. Jeez. What? Come back here for a sec. I want to show off this. Ah, yes. Very neat feature where you can climb. You also see. Hopefully, we'll get to see it that you can climb ladders. So yeah, this is just something you do oh, automatically when you're running into a crate, a wall at the at the right height. Hey, wait a second, there's a ladder yeah. up here, but I don't think you're able to. There's like a, f a shield up there, so you can't. Oh. Didn't even see that. But yeah, this is the first game, I think, that really attempted uh, active combat, right? Because I guess so. I don't know. You get, a, you get a crosshair when you press right mouse button, and you have a shift, which between two block stands, and then you can like dodge attacks, sort of. Which is really interesting because this game feels really RPG-ish, you know, and then you have that that kind of combat. Ooh, yes, good sir. Come secret. Here. Oh, the door is locked. I am okay, getting sir. pretty Come. sick of locked doors. That happened to us yesterday as well. We were in a dungeon and we freed some girl we had to free, and we killed the boss, and we saw the chest, and we couldn't get in there because the door was locked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's just us failing at not being able to open it now. Almost I'm not sure if I want to jump in there. Ah, oh, come on, Ozzy. What's the worst that can happen? Who in the flame are you? Oh, all right, guys. Here. Oh, it's just. Hey, we have that. Some we have them. 
We have to find. Oh, no. So that was how quest so interaction worked. Suddenly the air shimmers with devour. Oh light. god. The Sahagin have followed you in. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so as you'll see, I'm holding down my right mouse button right now, which means I'm aiming at the mobs and then I'm just pressing my left mouse button to hit them. And I have a few abilities that I can use, but I actually don't have a lot. Most of my abilities are, are not specific to my class, but are more general. So this game uh, doesn't really use its standard Holy Trinity either, right? I actually read that most classes can do a bit of everything and you are supposed to do that that way as well. Like, you don't have a specific tank with the old time. Every class can take some sort of beating and uh, stuff like that and heal a bit. Which seems very interesting. Yeah, but that's, I mean... Uh, when you're just running normal dungeons like this, even on harder difficulty, normally you don't really need as a tank per se. What you need is just a a plate wearer that can do damage. I mean, something like me, which is I'm doing damage with my two hand weapons, and I'm able to hold aggro and able to take some beatings. Then they'll have a, a maybe a dedicated healer or something that is partly a healer and partly a DPS. So you have a lot of um, possibilities for for being able to do multiple things. Yeah. And by doing multiple things, we're not just thinking like like specking into different uh, into different uh, abilities. We are actually talking that you can you can be a combination of multiple classes. If if you like to, that yeah. means that you can get you can um, get some other classes abilities and use them as well. Indeed. And that opens up for a lot of possibilities. The Swahagan magic is gone. We beat them off. This time. Aiden looks weary after surviving this latest attack. I love that Perhaps voice in the background. You should it's talk to him cool. again. The narrator. Go now. Tell Ursa to hold the barricade just a little longer. Then meet Amalgam at the base of Misery's Peak when you're ready. Hey, Amalgam, don't. That was the guy we needed for the other dungeon. Need to hold the barricade the people just a need to talk him. Then meet Amalgam at the base of Misery's Peak when you're ready. Misery's Peak. That sounds misery. <laughs> Do you want to restore uh, your uh, your spell power? Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I guess I could. Dude, I kind of want to finish off this instance, but I, for the sake of this video, I guess we shouldn't wander too much. Uh, we haven't gotten any loot yet. I feel kind of disappointed. Oh, that's chest right here. Forget about that. That's loot. <laughs> 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 so here you'll see that all this is reserved for me. Um, hey, I have a question that I actually don't know. Uh, is there PvP in this game? Yes, there is. There's a bit of PvP, but... The PvP in this game isn't very good. The game is certainly not focused about PvP and not balanced for it at all. So that means there are specific classes that will just own other classes completely. Uh, yeah, okay. From from what I could understand, uh, we read some forums and about uh, about the game. So uh, PvP is mostly a place where you go and do some um, and see how your abilities are doing and perhaps. See how your, your abilities will do in PvE, but it it is not balanced right. in any way. Did we get a key, Ozzy? No. No. Did Let's you get a key? I don't think so. I didn't pick up any key as far as I could tell. Um, but let's just return to the city then, or wherever we had to return to. Yeah, finish. Oh yeah, right. we can. So we can like press finish when you're done with the dungeon, and just you'll get ported out of that, which is also a nice feature. Yep, I like it. Ooh, right there we are. What do we hear the narrator saying? We just came out of that. <laughs> okay, so we have directions on our mini map now. Let's see how well I block this. Yeah, you can have fun. Oh, now he's attacking me. Okay, should we just uh, return to the city? Yep. 
I'm All doing right. it right now. So you can like see up in my right corner, I have this uh, little uh, list of things I have to do or can do in Call of Island. Can recall, you know that, right? The button recall button. Oh, I yeah, I tend to forget about that. Now there's a guy Ooh, staring cloak. at me. Okay. Sure, you want to recall? Yes, just recall away. Uh, but yeah. So a lot of items have uses on them that like uses a spell. I read that. Um, so this cloak has a use on it. Duration one minute, and a lot of them recharge during the day, or some of them recharge uh, with those stones that we saw those shrines. Yeah, when you rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll light. actually have All a look at that in a second. Transformed the village. So yeah, like this. So shield of faith. Duration one minute. Slow up. Duration. Uh, creates a shimmering magical field around an ally that averts attacks, giving a plus two deflection bonus to AC, um, which I think is the kind of like defense in this game. This bonus is increased by one for every six cast levels. Right, one charge is recharged once a day. Um, and this is a very normal way to th for things or for items to work in this game. That I mean, there is there is like normal stats, uh, as you know it. There is items that can have say strength on them, but if you have two items, one which perhaps give three strength and another give five, if you wear both of those items, only the one giving five strength will actually count on your character, and the other won't. So that's why you can't really uh, stack stats like that. You'll have to stack these abilities, and some recharges in the day, some uh, require you to rest. It's very different. Uh, let's see what I want. I think I'll just take the cloak of faith. That seems reasonable. And it's feather cloak, and it's recharged every day. We go. Once Where did we put it? There we put it. Double clicking, and I'm now wearing it. Let's right. see it now. So. Sadly. Okay, so we have to find that amalgam guy. Oh well, uh, we can just do that a bit later, because right now I'll just have a look at the fighter trainer here. So yeah, I'm a fighter. Um, and then so I can walk up to this guy and I can talk with him about enhancements and I can ask about getting to the next level and stuff. So I'll just start by going to the next level because I know I can, I can uh, well, level up. Okay, here he's asking me whether I want to stay on my path or if I like to, to like select another path. If I want to select another path, I can... Like, um, yeah, as I, as I said earlier, open up abilities from other classes, but I will just stick on my own here. Uh, two skill points, jump, intimidate. Yeah. Focus, weapon, slashing weapons, apparently some new feed I'm getting. Fortitude increase, uh, we'll just go with it. Okay. And the game just reminds me that I have one action point to spend. Action point is spent on enhancements. So let's see right here. This is just different. It's just minor uh, increases to my abilities or to my stats. Like this one. This is an activated ability that grabbed me two action boosts bonus uh, for 20 seconds. And I already have one that's called like the, the fighter attack boost. Uh, so I can't buy that again. Uh... I'll just go with the armor class boost, I guess, because I'm also tanking a bit, so... I will take that, and I'll see if I can find it again. So this is like my character sheet. We have different kind of stats in here. Normally, strength, dexterity, uh, constitution, health and stamina. It's, it's pretty normal. Uh, we have spell resistance, attack bonus, uh, fortitude, whatever. Spell points, which is not really my thing, which is more like a thing for OC. I have hit points instead. Yep. Uh, have all my spells in here, uh, skills in here, which is both passive and active in one big mix. Um, and there's uh, there's different kind of uh, uh, skills here. Some of them are, are rather stupid, like this. Listen skill which is like allows you to hear enemies that are trying to move silently as well as subtle noises which others may not hear and also it's like swimming it's just that's just stupid and nobody's Very going for RPGs. them but you also have like open lock which will be available to the rogues or available to me if i subspec into rogue 
it's just very RPG. So it gives the option to play it on a role play very well. Then yeah, can do that e exactly. I also the the stats stats items are very weird because if you have gloves with four strength on it, for example, and then I'm not saying strength is a stat in this game, but just for an example, and then you get feet with five strength, you only gain five strength in total. It doesn't add up or something like that. Only if it's a specific set item and it's like set to add those items together. So gear is not really. Uh, you know, it's more like the uses on it that how you want to have your gear and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. the en enhancements and what type of enemy you're fighting against is very important and stuff like that. Exactly. Okay, I'll just uh, have a quick look at the DDO store because, as Ozzy said earlier, you're using some kind of points in there, and those points is something you can buy for well, real life money, and you earn them by just doing stuff in the game, which seems to be a good way to do it. Uh, did, and did you say that you could combine classes in this game? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. No, that's fine. Uh, you can, Just yeah. Okay. Oh, show the store. So I'll just go to the store here and let's see if it... Br yeah, there. That's bottle of old size grog. Okay. Quantity one. It will cost me five of these points and I have 50 points available. So that is excellent. Quick buy. Uh, I don't have a coupon, I'll place the order. Thank you for the purchase. Yes, that's cool. Please check your inventory. Alright. There we go. That was actually pretty pretty smooth. Yes, I'll take that trade. Cool, quest completed. Excellent. So, this was a quest we got very early on. I'm guessing it's just a way to make people realize that the store is not a dangerous place and it's something you can go buy. I mean... It's it's a very normal yeah. thing. You want to get your customers to realize that it's not the first purchase is always the hardest to make, so they want them to realize it's to do the first purchase actually. Yes. Oh, see. So I don't know where this per person is, but uh, I think he's what? outside. Yes. Yeah, I think he's in the world. Uh, is there anything before we venture out? Is there anything we have to check out back here? Because I'm not actually sure there is. No, I don't think so. I mean, there is a crafting system in the game. Uh, that's no reason for me to stay here to show it because there isn't really anything to show. We haven't actually been able to do any crafting. Um, there is some different kind of craftings, and some of it is like you can place or replace abilities on items. So as we talked about earlier. Most of the items have some kind of special abilities on them, and you can change those f through crafting. Or you can, like, bind an item to you. And binding mm -hmm. an item to you, that means that more or less every item in the game is actually not bound to a character as they are in many other RPGs. They are not bound on bind and pickup, they're not bound and equipped or anything, so that means that you can sell them whenever you're done with them. And uh, selling items on auction house or to or to specific vendors that can resell to other players is a very normal way to well to get some gold in the game. Yeah. Um, but you can bind uh, bind uh, items to you, so that means that you won't be able to sell them anymore. But when doing so, that means that the item will uh, I think will take less damage when used, and you'll be able to uh, enchant it. Which is something you can't do when an item is just, uh, well, isn't bound to you. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we have this quest to help Yas, Lars, isn't that? Um, yeah, I, I think we need to, uh, just follow me. Okay. Pretty sure I'm going right away. I didn't arrow <laughs> on the map, so I'm just, arrows, arrows are always good. I'm tracking it right now, but it doesn't seem to really... Oh, I can see there is... Yeah, I can see him on the map now, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just leaving yeah, you to you. fight with these big bad rats. Horrible rats. Let's go, and but all yeah, these digging, guys I'm have a cause... I'm digging this game. What? I think from all the games that we've played, I've, like, I'm liking this the best so far. Yeah, I do. Whoa, what is attacking me? Fucking sorcerer. Oh, and you just aggroed a bunch of other dudes here. Yeah. 
Just you don't die on me, I see. You are my healer. Ah, uh, never. Okay, good. Ooh, level up. Nice, rank congratulations. Seven. I'm also very... Level 2, rank 6. Yeah, I'll probably be able to advance to uh, level 3 in a second. Oh, wait a second. So that means I was, level, I was level 1 before. So actually to get to level 2, I have to uh, I have to talk to my trainer in the city, which I did just a moment ago. Very interesting. Ah, and... Help. What? Did you attack something? Oh, it's okay. Oh, I love Undead. I can just... I can banish my the Elder Undead with this turn Undead. They all die in one second. <laughs> so, oh, so the, I'm a cleric. the quest is up where I am. Yeah, I'm coming. Whenever you are done... Uh... I just killed like five people. I'm playing a class that's easily soloable. Soloable, so... That's why I'm doing okay. Okay, so you have to go up the mountains as expected. You can just uh, trade in your quest. Hell yeah, let's do it. Quest bestowed. I love that language in this game. It's very RPG. I can see why a lot of people would like this game. But when you are a hardcore WoW player, stop playing first for like a month, get your mindset off that game and then start playing this. Otherwise you'll probably not like it. Yeah, it will feel a bit off. I mean, as far as yeah. I could tell, there's oh, also a few choices in the game yeah, that you make for your character that you are not able to redo. Which means that yeah. many players, like, or the general suggestion is that you make a character and you uh, make some choices and then you realize that those choices are wrong and you go back to make a new You're character here. and do them right. Come. There isn't much time. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, Take your time. It is not wise to combat a dragon. Selimus, ready your party. Oh, uh, we're gonna kill a dragon? dragon? Awesome!